Welcome everyone to another episode of the Tired F1 Pod. We are back and we're better than ever. Amar, how are you doing? I'm tired, man, but also back and glad to be back on the heels of a very exciting uh, race weekend, I thought. It was a fun weekend, wasn't it? Um, and I think there were a few little talking points. The biggest one for me was was Mercedes. Um, not even just what happened on track. That's not really the interesting point of, the, of this entire discussion. It's really Toto Wolf and a slew of comments that he made across the weekend. So Amar, I know that you want to say a bunch of stuff about this. So what I'm going to do is hit you with individual comments, all right? I'm going to give you a quote from Toto Wolf, and I want you to respond to that quote. Ready? All right. All right, let's do it. Quote number one. The fact is that the driver's role in the development of the vehicle is always very overestimated. There is input once a year for the upcoming vehicle de um, development and during the year, simply feedback on how the car drives. It's worse to lose an engineer if he goes to another team 12 months later than a driver who changes team next week. Go. Oh, my goodness. Um... You know, so Total Wolf sounds like uh, the guy who just got dumped uh, by by his girlfriend or wife or whatever significant other, right? And now doesn't know how to respond. And he is just spiraling out of control, right? I mean, this sounds like a lot of jealousy, right? Because the one thing that did become clear at, at the end of this weekend is that Lewis Hamilton's decision to move to Ferrari has been vindicated and then miles beyond, right? And Total Wolf looks like the guy who's been left at the altar now um, who was actually going to be the one to pull the rug from Hamilton before Hamilton did the same to him. Remember, he signed him to a two-year contract in the in the hopes of lining up Kimi Antonelli. And then, of course, Hamilton probably read the, <clears throat> read the tea leaves and he just sort of decided to pull his own thing. So I think that quote, to me, speaks of nothing more than just being hurt. He is hurt. He does not know how to react. And the fact of the matter is, his team is in the shitter right now. I mean, that's the word to use. I'm sorry to say that. Sorry if those of you that have young kids, maybe maybe bleep that out in your own time or something. But I mean, he is just sounding like somebody who does not have any answers. And you know what people like that do is they point fingers everywhere. That quote to me read nothing more than just that. He was sounding better about whatever changes Hamilton made. Oh, by the way, we're two weeks removed from your home race, Chess. I mean, him talking about, well, we were going to, we're going to test like every session is going to be some, some sort of uh, figuring out a different configuration, changing a setting, all of that. And now two weeks later, three weeks later, he's, he's talking about, oh, we shouldn't have been doing all these things. What is he talking about? So I did find the question that, that he was asked um, and that that was the response to. And it was basically, um, you know how much is uh, how, how much is, is 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 the influence that Lewis has on the car driving development direction, right? Right. Um, so, so just specifically to that question, do, do, are, you, are, you, are you saying that mm. that he's he's wrong? That actually it's that a driver plays more of a part than an engineer. Okay, I don't know if he's right or wrong because I don't know how Mercedes work, right? But clearly, the way they've been working for the okay, last two I, years. Okay, yeah, fair, fair enough. Maybe, maybe, maybe he is right. He is right. It doesn't even matter what the actual answer is, right? And I hate this. I've been seeing a lot of people saying and defending him, saying, "Well, he was asked a question." By the way, you too, Shaz. I mean, he was asked a question. So what? He's been asked millions of questions over the years. You, he knows what he's saying. That answer is on purpose. It might well be that everything he said is 100% unequivocally true. That's not the answer you give in public. And okay. you know that. And we've seen what happened during the 2021 season when he had a back and forth with Christian Horner and they knew how to play the media game. He knows he is, he is super competent. He is an outstanding executive. He is all of the above. We've given him his flowers over the years. But that quote was meant to really, in my opinion, get that big dig at Lewis Hamilton. So they, he must have not been happy with whatever Lewis decided to do. And clearly it was bad. And and so what? He, isn't Mercedes a no-blame culture kind of thing, right? Isn't that the word I keep hearing all the time? Like that phrase? Who, like, who is he who blaming in that, in that He's not that blaming answer. that, but that is passive-aggressive behavior. This is exactly what it is, is to say, oh, the factor, who was he talking about? He wasn't talking about George Russell that way, was he? You can't tell me that. That is, that is clearly meant to take a dig at Lewis Hamilton. It may well be that Where, Lewis where's does the, not where's have the any dig? Input. Where's the dig? I mean, the whole reason he's talking about, you know, an engineer, uh, losing an engineer is more important than a driver is, is, is Lewis. That's what he's trying to get at. 
Sure. He hasn't recovered from the whole thing. I mean, I have more on that, too, because he's been flirting with Max like nobody's business. So okay. I mean, this is all kind of like, I mean, personally, I'm not that fussed about this particular quote. Uh, you know, if you take it at face value, which which I did, I do with it, any quote that comes my way. I'm, I'm not trying to I'm not necessarily trying to create any sort of background for it. it it's just you I've been given a quote. I want to know what the question was, which is why uh, I was. I wanted to know why he would say that, and what what I've read suggests that he was he was pushed, 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 and then said, "Look, it's much more important to have an engineer than it is to have a driver." Uh, and I always come back to, okay, well, if you had a choice between Max Verstappen and Adrian Newey in your car, uh, in your team, who are you going to have? <laughs> For me, it's always going to be Adrian Newey. And the proof of the pudding is you've had the greatest driver of all time, in my opinion, in your car for the last three years. Has the car got better? No. So is it the driver that that, that does the work or is it the They also engine don't seem to work? have listened to him though. They, it seems like they didn't listen. They to have him. this season they, though, haven't they? Okay, the, but the now, stuff I mean, that they've it's too about, late. Now, it is too late. Yeah, it? but it's well, too, but, too but you'd years expect into you'd, this. you'd expect a step forward and and that hasn't happened. I agree. And, and I would I would actually say look there's a really good podcast that um if anyone has the time to look to to go and look up um go and have a listen it's called Back to Base um by the bbc i'll stick a link to it in the description below but it talks about the mercedes team as they came back from abu dhabi in 2023 and the winter of development that happened and um, one of the interesting things uh, that came up in that was that they've they've had interviews with with everyone there toto's in there lewis is in there uh, james allison is in there mike elliott i think is even in there and one of the interesting things is how late uh, Lewis came and saw the car. It was ages, ages into it, and and he says, "Oh, you know, they're they're tweaking it, uh, tweaking in it, and stuff." At the point that I see it, I, I I don't have any input in it up until that point. So that whole thing mm-hmm. about oh, they didn't listen to Lewis, and oh, they, they they followed a particular development direction. Lewis doesn't have any input in the car until really late in its development. Listen to that podcast, and you'll know what I mean. Okay, next quote. The car that we have under us is not currently fast enough. However, we must make sure that we are not trying to find a silver bullet each weekend when it comes to how we run the car. We need to focus on getting the basics right and maximizing the package we have. Today, we didn't have the car in the right window. We made too many extreme changes after the sprint and that made the most important part of the weekend much more challenging go who is he talking to uh that was just what, what does he mean no no but what does he mean by we i mean this, no, this that, sounds was, like uh, something... that was that was sky sports he was speaking to no i know i know but what i meant to say is when he says we need to wh- why are you telling us all that am i in I, open to interpretation whatever however you I, want no, to take it i know what you say but i mean say that to the team why are you why are you doing this in the media he doesn't need to give these long explanations for things. I don't understand. There's, there's no way. I mean, Ferrari had a bad, had a bad uh, race, relatively speaking. Uh, you know, but you, you don't, you don't get these long form quotes from uh, from Fred Vassar or anything. Like, I mean, Toto Wolff is tactful enough to know how to figure this out. Why is he raking his team on coal in in the open in the media? Why? Why are you doing that? I Fred don't doesn't get asked like, the same questions. Fred doesn't get asked at the moment. Why are Ferrari performing so oh, badly? They don't. Why well, he's going to get asked that next year? I, yeah, I, but he's I not getting asked it right now. Yeah, he's not getting asked. But beginning end, what what good does this serve? I mean, they already know this. Yes, you know they don't need to find a silver bullet. Are you trying to tell me that they have been and he signed off on it this whole time? Is this not a pattern that that Mercedes have had for like seasons and seasons and seasons where they're 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 open to a fault about uh, their weaknesses? So they'll often come out and say something went bad. This is why it went bad. And I don't know. They'll, what's do bad their, with Mercedes. they'll do it in their debriefs because they've been doing it right the way through this season. Okay. They did it across all of last season. They did it across the winter. Lewis himself has also been quite openly critical about. Uh, the team about decisions made. He even said in, in the media last year they didn't listen to me. So, so there is a lot of they're, they're, the team in general are quite open about admitting when they make a mistake or go down a uh, a path that they shouldn't have. Uh, is this not just 
Toto just following the same pattern, but but we're we're, we're picking up on it more because they're not doing well. It's not just that they're not doing well. Their leading car finished 15 seconds behind Ferrari. Yeah. On okay. a weekend that Ferrari did not get so it right. Is that this not going to draw in Ferrari. those questions? Yeah, but, but again, who is signing off on this? When he says we need to not try to find a silver bullet and we need to work on the way, he's been at all the races, he's signing off on these. Is he trying to say that someone else is signing off on this and that he's opposed to it? So on this, What is he actually saying? So in this situation, that's exactly what did happen, wasn't it? Because Lewis himself, even he's on Team Radio Lewis afterwards... Under the bus. Even but why, on, why, yeah, but okay, but like, George didn't do that. He was the car who finished 50 seconds. Exactly. George Ferrari. didn't, so George <laughs> didn't do that. Yeah. What are you, I mean, I don't understand. Again, we're, we're three weeks removed or four weeks, whatever it was from the Melbourne Grand Prix where he sat down and gave that interview. And, and, and I can't remember the lady who asked that question. She said, well, what is it looking like? Cause you're going to try to find the car. What, what, what you're going to find these, are you going to try to use every practice session? And I think he corrected it. So well, no, every session moving forward is going to be a bit of a testing session. So I don't understand what you're trying to do. Yeah. Within the course of this quote unquote testing program that they're running throughout the races, it could be that you're trying to find a silver bullet. Clearly, Lewis and George went in different directions, so they were trying to test something. I don't understand why you throw Lewis under the bus in this way. Like this quote and the other quote right before, the, or and I don't know if it was sequential or not, but why are you doing that to him? Like this is a this is a breakup happening in front of our own eyes, and and that's what's happening. It's playing out in public now. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, again, with this one, it, it felt like. Uh, a standard pattern. Uh, Lewis said it. Um, Toto said it. George said it. All, all three of them basically said the same thing that we went after something that that we shouldn't have had. It's, and actually, to be fair, we go. On. It's not that he said it, right? And I'll give a shout out to to your friend Cam, um, who who, who runs a, a wonderful YouTube channel, a couple of wonderful YouTube, which is it's the way he said it and the words he used. It's not the fact that you sound hurt. Everything is fine. Look, I've been through the Ferrari years, even up until when, oh my God, I had to listen to Mattia Bonato race after race after race, justify his stupidity. Okay. But this is justification. Not, no, no, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that he's doing that. What I'm trying to say is for context, I, I have been at the receiving end of this as a Ferrari fan, but it is fairly mm -hmm. obvious that Toto looks like he is out of answers. And you know what? At some point, the buck stops with him. And this is classic him trying to, you know, gaslight everybody else saying, oh, we need to find this. We need to find that. Why are you doing that? You are, you built a culture that has been studied at universities. He goes out and gives talks. This is what you're going to, this is what you're going to do now. Yeah, he I could have just said, look, we got it wrong. We got it wrong with Lewis. He's done that in the past, right? He said, okay, look, with Lewis, we went in a different direction. And what happened to we? We need we we all he got said, it wrong. He did say we. Yeah, he, that's well, exactly well, okay, what he said. But when it's quote. time to take the blame, a leader takes the blame and said, "Look, I I should have done better. I I need to make better calls on this." He could have done that. Why throw it's Lewis his, under so, the bus? Okay, so it's Toto's decision to to decide set up on. No, the but he signed off on it. But he signed off on it. He's team principal, right? Yeah, but he's not an engineer. Okay, fine, but but okay, but but he is he is the lead. My point is just this. His words are carefully chosen, and they're chosen in a way that that speaks to this passive aggressive nature to an outgoing Lewis Hamilton. And I I didn't say that up until this race. I have been reading stuff for weeks on out, and now you're seeing with every race that they're struggling. Mercedes look like they're not even going. They're going to have to wait until 2028 to, to to be relevant. Now it, it looks like that with every passing race because they look further away from where they are. And maybe the numbers don't bear out quite that way, but it does not feel like it. They got a flukish result in the sprint race. So you have to call it for what it is, right? And Lewis drove a heck, a heck of a car out. I mean, I don't know how he got that result, but he did. Also aided by the fact that Fernando held up the rest of the field, which is classic Fernando. Probably, they should probably, probably just give him a gift, right? I mean, he should just sign Fernando for next year, even though he signed up for Aston. But I mean, good God, like, I mean, why are we pretending like they, they, they if not for that fluky sprint podium, this was a, this was a classic Mercedes weekend. That's what, that's what this is. Okay. Um, final quote from Toto. Uh, well, <laughs> actually, it's not well, even the final more. quote. Uh, <laughs> there's more. There's more. Okay. This one you'll like. Uh, so Lewis is, uh, is in a surprisingly good mood, uh, brackets, after the poor start to the 2024 season. I don't know if it's because he knows he'll be going uh, elsewhere next year, but it's just not like him. He's a true professional. I know very well that in the world of sports, there are a lot of ups and downs. They say that it's important to bounce back. But the reality is 
that right now it's difficult because we we're often mentally beaten down. We want to do better, but it can be tough when we don't meet our own expectations. So are you going to tell me with a straight face that he is not, this is not more passive aggressive behavior? Please like, explain. Why? Why? Okay, let me let me ask you this before I start. What was the question? Was the question how is Lewis Hamilton feeling? Was that the question? This one I don't know. I'm just okay, but so I'm just quoting at you. Why? Why volunteer that kind of information? I don't understand why you would do that. I mean, he knows. Everybody knows. Uh, even Carlos is feeling bad. I mean, I read Carlos quotes this. I don't know a couple of days ago, saying he wish he could have continued with Ferrari. He's never actually quite said it that way uh, since since the whole news has broken up. It seems like it not seems like it is now a hundred percent guarantee that that Lewis has has done has done the right thing for himself as he chose Mercedes. Uh, what is it? A decade plus ago, that was the right time to choose Mercedes. Move on from McLaren. He's doing the same thing now. Of course, he's going to be in a great mood. What do you want him to do? Your car stinks, man. And in the words of Christian Horner. Fix your bleeping car. That's the issue here. And now, if you're going to tell me that Lewis has nothing to do with it, it's engineers and uh, all these things, then it's all on you, man. Why does he have to worry about it? I don't understand. Like, what? Wh- wh- is your problem that he's not coming in upset? Like, what? Should, he should come in with like a sad yeah. face every now. Like, what? What? What you do? Is he come in crying? Final quote, because because yeah, there's more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, final, final quote, and this this comes back to what you were saying earlier, right? Oh, this reads so badly. But anyway, here we go. Uh, for simple minds, that might be the only reason you stay in a car, and that's it. Uh, in in response to um, uh, why would Max want to leave Red Bull? Uh, but maybe there is more depth to other people who consider other factors too. And I think Max has more depth. This this is obviously a response to <laughs> to Christian Horner's uh, concentrate on the, on fixing your car, Toto. Quote, no, um, so rather I than was okay. Market. I was okay with everything, but the thing that got me worked up is that quote because he, in that in that phrase or that those couple sentences, insulted everybody but himself. Everybody but simple minds. What are we? Simple minds. Who? What do you mean by simple minds? What does that mean? Isn't he the one who said that? I think, he's, I think he's, chooses. I think he's talking to Christian Horner. I think that the oh, simple is. minds is Christian Horner. Okay, fine. Oh, fine. But isn't he the one that was saying, oh, the, the the driver always wants to choose the quickest car? Isn't that his quote from not too long ago? Fix your damn car. Why are you saying simple minds? And this is him. This is shameful, man. This is shameful behavior from, from a guy who has been at the helm of the sport for the last decade plus. Oh, by the way, I mean, we, we should start digging back into it because I, I, I watched uh, a clip from Sky Sports where Karun talked about um, and Damon talked about how Toto took over a team that was essentially built by Ross Braun and others, right? And he's enjoyed great success. I don't want to do that he, today. He, he must have done nothing to to. No, no, no. Of team, course he did. No, no, I'm not nothing. saying that. I'm not saying that. But then, okay, if you're going to do that, we're going to give him credit. We have to hold his feet to the fire. And quite frankly, his behavior when it comes to flirting with Max is shameful. It just is. It's not too long ago that 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 they were rivals, right? And the way he's been talking about Max, so, oh my God, it's desperate. So, they, they, us, they, they're going to they're going to lose. A seven-time world champion they want to have the best driver they can possibly have in the car who are they going to want to have two things you can want max absolutely no problem it's the way you're doing it number two max already has a contract until 28 and he he's he said publicly that he's sticking to it now there might be ways for that contract to be broken there might be other ways to do it you do that stuff behind the scenes you don't play that out in public so this is why i keep coming back to he is, this is passive aggressive behavior against Lewis Hamilton on one end. And he sounds desperate as hell because he knows that he has a car that is nowhere close. Good God. I mean, Alpine's going to make a bigger step than Mercedes this year. I tell you what, by the end of the year, you'll see Alpine score a few more points than we ever expected. But what, what the hell, man? Why are you doing that in public where you keep doing this flirtatious thing with Max when he has said he has no intentions of leaving? You can work him all you want. You can work the Verstappens all you want. No problem. We know that F1 contracts are just words on paper and they don't really mean anything. They're just words and anything can be broken. But why do you have to do this? He's uh, Two weeks ago, he said, oh yeah, Max is going to win everything. Nobody's going to catch him. No, you focus on your damn car. My guys might catch him by the end of the year. You don't know that. And my guys might win next year. You shut up, Toto. I don't want to hear from you about that. Wait, wait, which, car- which guys? He's only got one driver in the car. Well, the no, I'm talking year. about my guys. My guys, Ferrari. I'm talking mm-hmm. about my guys. I'm saying, I'm saying you mind your own business. 
the way he's flirting with Max, that I mean, I good. I mean, if I'm George Russell, I'm like, I'm getting the hell out of here too, man. His contract is end at the ending at the end of 25, I think. Is that correct? He's he signed on. No, not yeah, 25, right? At the end of so 26. I mean, what is he talking about? What is he doing? I don't yeah, understand. Yeah. So okay, so so look, my 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 view on this, and you 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 know what it is, right? That that I, I I'm I'm, I'm taking this much more at face value. Like each quote has to be assessed on its own merits, and I I kind of did this to to highlight what the what the global view is, right? And there is a global view. Yes, you could look at it as if Toto Wolff is basically trying to throw Lewis Hamilton under the bus. I don't really see the benefit in doing that or why he would do that. In in each of the situations that we've talked about, nothing that Toto has said is incorrect. I would definitely have an engineer over a driver. I would, I definitely think that Lewis admittedly by himself went down the wrong route with setup and that cost him in qualifying and the race. That whole thing about, you know, Lewis looked a little, uh, was happier than I thought he would be. I, I took that more as, and, and when you read the full quote, I think this is what he actually meant. He took it more as, look, he has every right to feel down in the dumps, but actually he put a brave face on it uh, because he's a true professional. That's that's kind of, that's what I took from that quote. And it's what you, what I think was meant in that quote when you look at the full thing. But why, my, my, bigger, my bigger question is, why is he being asked these questions? And look, ultimately... Lewis going to Ferrari, number one, is a massive, massive deal. He's leaving a team that he's been at for 10 years to go to what was ostensibly a rival for for a a bulk of the years that they were doing well. So Toto is always going to be asked questions that pertain to Lewis. And second, the slightly, this is the one that's going to get me in trouble, is that Lewis has a massive following, right? And I've said this more than once. Merck fans currently aren't all Mercedes fans. A big chunk of them are Lewis Hamilton fans. And right now, Lewis Hamilton fans, me included, are not happy that Lewis Hamilton is not winning races. He's now not won a race in 50 50. races now. 50 races, he's not won a race. That hurts, man. So Toto's going to keep getting asked questions about why is why is your car so bad? Why is Lewis not winning races? And as long as he's being asked those questions, he has to give a response. These are the responses that you're going to expect when a team that was yeah. winning with the driver that was winning is now not winning. You are they're not in a, they're, they're not in a position like Ferrari or Red Bull where they're going to get easy questions. Like okay. Ferrari are in you a are, rebuilding phase. You are phase, absolutely basically. correct. You are absolutely correct that he is going to get asked these questions. And maybe journalists and whoever is in the media is trying to poke at it just to get this stuff. But he is smart enough to know how to answer each and every question and know the implication, the outcome of that question, how it's going to be taken about. And and so to me, maybe maybe there are missteps, right? Because if you're talking too much, you're giving too many answers. Yeah, at some point, you're going to say something that you probably didn't intend for it to be said a certain way. I get it. And I I get your point about taking each of these comments on its own, but you can start to see a pattern now. You can start to see. But but that pattern, I think, comes from the fact that there is a fan base that is massively hurt by this. And and everything that he says gets taken in in that light. Not all of it has to be about Lewis leaving, but every question gets made into about Lewis leaving. So that's where those questions, that's where those where those answers Come and I don't think anything that he has said right now is necessarily outside of the context of how you, Mercedes runs their ship and has done for the last ten years. That no blame right. culture that you're talking about, that internal introspective look, why are things going wrong, is what they have done throughout all of this. That part of this I cannot blame. Right, the the answers that they then come up with are a problem. Like that's what's leading them around the down the wrong. Uh, rabbit well, I, but, I also... but, but, the, but asking the questions and, and even doing that in public what they have done in their debrief every one of them does it lewis does it russell does it toto does it james allison does it all of them do it none of this it's just that toto is the mouthpiece that you hear but that culture that comes from him is expressed by everyone else in the team both in private and in public so i don't think that what he's saying is wrong it's just that who he's saying it to 
becomes a very, very sore point for the millions and millions of fans that are out there of one particular driver. Well, this is why I think that um, the, the way he should answer these questions need to be given a lot more thought, right? Because what he has well, right to now do. with Lewis Hamilton is an unprecedented situation. Because you're right, in Lewis Hamilton, you have someone that transcends the sport in ways that, that are unimaginable, right? He has global following, global appeal, all of the above. What he's also had is, is a team that has been at the height of success for more than a decade ago. Came that, that sort of ended with a thud in, in 2021. Now, of course, there are circumstances there, but since then they haven't looked anywhere close to it. And this is, this is the confluence of these, these two big things that sort of make it a very unique situation that they're in. So you're right. No one else is going to get those questions. I mean, even Red Bull had those those four dominant years with Seb and then, you know, a, a long stretch of nothing happening. I don't remember Christian Horner getting asked or answered those questions, although the people did call for his head at a certain point. I think maybe if 2021 yes, had did. gone the other way, maybe, maybe yes, he wouldn't have. Yeah, so, yes, they so did. that happened too. And I think Toto is going through the same thing. But what do we say about champions always? You learn a lot more about them when they're losing as they're opposed to when they're winning. And right now, the chatter, that's fine. That's one thing, right? What they do on track, yes, you're going to make mistakes. I'm cool with that. And I don't even care. I'm not a Mercedes fan. But what I'm hearing about him doing with Max, I repeatedly see his quotes. These are not, you know, uh, sources or like conjecture or anything like These are his words. And he is making it a point to pry Max out of Red Bull for whatever reason. Well, that just, because that's a very obvious reason. No, it's fine. That's fine. But the way you're going about it, I mean, he just sounds desperate. He just sounds desperate. And that that is very unbecoming of a guy that we sure. have known to be at the pinnacle of, of the sport. Sure. I, I, I think of the slew of quotes, that's the one that upsets me as well. That, like, There's no need for him to do that. Um, and the, the most embarrassing thing is is when Max is is turning around and saying, "I'm not leaving Red Bull. I don't know why yeah. you're coming after me." Yeah. Uh, in fact, I think I, he said somewhere <laughs> in a press conference, "Well, people are always talking nice things about me right now, aren't they?" Um, well, exactly. I get that. Yeah. Okay, Amar, we're going to have to move to another another topic as we uh, start to run out of time. Um, Ferrari, your team. Oof. Of Oh, man, uh, this is the kind of weekend I don't want from them, okay? I just oh, okay. don't. It's not even the end result of it. Um, the four and the five, I think, was okay. I think they whatever adjustments they made from from the, the sprint race to the, the actual race, I don't think worked. I think they miscalculated a few things. Not running the hard tire at any point, I think, hurt them because I think that when they were on the mediums, they were, they were doing okay. They might have actually been doing better than McLaren, but by then... The race had sort of gone away, and of course, we we haven't talked about the, the the sort of the safety car, virtual safety car, double yellow debacle that I think it really screwed them too in the process too. Um, uh, it's just not Sh that. Charles, Charles, Charles did all right after the first he did, safety he, car, he, he, but then well, he was on. I think he did the virtual one, and then I think Lando got in on the. I, I might be wrong. Both, but, both of them got in under the virtual. Okay, yeah. fine. Yeah, that might be the thing. But I think for Carlos too, I mean, he, but my, my thing isn't even that. Like, I'm, I'm okay with the result because you're going to have one of those weekends. It, it wasn't great, but it was okay. I just didn't, uh, I just didn't like the two of them duking it out on the track. I mean, I think both of them, both of them, I think needed to be summoned to the, I know, yeah, I know you want, you want all of that, but you won't want that next year. But, but here's the thing. I did not like seeing that. I did, I thought, and I've been a, a Carlos supporter throughout the year. I still am. I think what he did during the, the sprint race was a little bit over the line. And conversely, I think what, what Charles did on at, at the opening lap also was was just over the line. Too. Mate, I think they both were over that. That was that very a, aggressive. That was and they good both, news. I, I and, loved it, mate. I, I know you loved it. And the worst part about that was between this after the sprint, I think they, they were both asked questions about, well, Charles said something to the effect of, yeah, we've talked it out and everything is okay. And then Carlos said, oh, we actually have never talked about any of this. So... It was just, I did not like seeing that that quickly. I mean, this is race five in a 24. I mean, this is race 20. Okay, I get it. Like, not, you know, everything's like, whatever. I'm just not, no holes barred kind of thing. But this, I did not like that. And I think, I think Fred needs to sit both of them down and talk about it because um, Charles was really good this weekend. I think, I think he was a better driver you on this weekend. You sound surprised. No, I'm not surprised. I mean, I'm not surprised. I've always, <laughs> I've always believed that they're more neck and neck than than what we believe, and I, we've talked about the the contrast and the sort of the similarities and the and the contrast there. But um, I think this was a weekend where I, I think they probably, if they had not taken each other out at that first turn, maybe could have been vying for a podium. Um, 
maybe uh but it's st- it still looked like they were a bit off I right i mean so. i had they yeah because the heart tired did them in they just they just didn't i don't know what they did but it didn't quite work out for them yeah man, but yeah mate first of all i was i was here for it that that <laughs> that, that sprint race is freaking brilliant i thought uh carlos and fernando's little uh little fight uh-huh. was brilliant like no one should have got a penalty for that it's absolute nonsense that fernando did oh no he should have gotten a penalty he should have. that was way over the line from him it really was and we can debate this later but sorry go ahead <laughs> i know for, for me that was just uh you're just was, you just, was just racing man it was, it was it was great and then it, yeah i mean even the argy bargy into the hairpin carlos and, and Charles was yeah uh yeah okay maybe it was a bit over the line from carlos but but actually, I enjoyed it, and and I, it it tells me that they're, right. they're they're both really hungry, and 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 actually, then Charles move around the outside into turn one was beautiful. That was beautiful. That was great. Absolutely great. beautiful. So it was yeah, thumbs up from me on 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 uh, both on both counts. And um, probably need to talk about Carlos and his qualifying error. That that wasn't a small error. Uh, I know both of them had qualifying errors. Um, uh, Charles in the rain in sprint qualifying, and then Carlos out of the final corner in in real qualifying. He got lucky, man. Oh yeah, no, I I thought oh, I I mean, oh, good God, had had that Ferrari been damaged, it would have been game over, right? And and that would have I couldn't wait. I mean, I already had people on the web saying, hey, well, what do you think about Carlos now? And I still maintain. I mean, look, you're going to have ups and downs. You're going to have some some run of form here and there. That's always going to happen. Um, and look, this. But there's no, but there's no denying that Carlos is the only Ferrari driver that has won not one but two races in the last year plus. So there, that's that's there too. I mean, and those have been fair and square wins. It's not like that he was handed. I mean, okay, Max, move Max is out, but you know what I'm saying. Like he he's won those out, um, and so I think that there's there's something there. But oof, that was a tough moment. Yeah, I, I agree with all of that. And um, the only thing that amuses me is uh, that. For some reason, when when Charles Leclerc hits the wall, it's ah, uh, just done it again. Carlos hits the wall. It's like, oh, it's, it's rare, isn't it? He doesn't do that very often. Is the car broken? No. Ah, oh, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do the. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't. I mean, he did get back out there, and he did. And look, all that. And that said, was he, that he was one place that was behind his, Charles. That was so his, it wasn't like that was his skill, was it? That well. I just I think that whatever I think Ferrari seem to have gone into this mode where they they have decided to pull it back in qualifying and 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 have better race pace right which I think makes all the sense in the world given how last year last couple of years it went but it just does feel like the drivers are trying to push the car that much harder and I think that's probably what he did there and it doesn't seem like they've had a good run in qualifying really I mean they both just looked off I, I think Carlos was driving angry after this after the sprint he was. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, you know, he was he was annoyed that he he got knocked down the order, um, and yeah. he was probably annoyed that his teammate passed him in the manner that he did, and he didn't lose that in the race either. He was um, he was the scrappier of the two, whereas Charles kind of serenely went off and and you know got the position that I think the car ultimately was going to get. I take your point about about the hard tire stint and not having one, but I think you know Lando was not going to be caught. Um, yeah. And no, that that deserved. that um, that podium was kind of out of reach for them as much as they tried. No, but they kind of tried what they could. And I thought, especially with the VSC, um, when Charles got his tires changed and Lando didn't on that first lap, the advantage Ferrari. But it never really it never really happened, did it? No, um, no, but but Charles was was you know showing more of those tire management skills that he showed in Japan really nicely. Uh, Carlos just was was stuck fighting people that I think he didn't really expect to be fighting and that was the dif- the the difference between the two of them in the end we've seen it now right in in this era of formula 1 too right the DRS train is very much a thing now even for i mean maybe outside of red bull because they just have such great straight line speed and their DRS is so much more powerful and impactful i think for pretty much anyone else once you get in that train um it's done that's why you want to try to qualify behind the two red bulls as much as you can really yeah i I mean i don't i don't really know what the fix to that is um but one one thing that i i was kind of encouraged by was the fact that you you know the 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 sweepers after turn four um Mm -hmm. the the sort of uh, left right and then the the slow corner actually cars were following pretty close through there and there were some competitive Mm -hmm. moves through those corners um i'm thinking of lewis's move on on magnuson which yeah, you know okay fine it was on magnuson but it was a 
Uh, was it Magnuson <laughs> or Hulkenberg? Sorry, on Hulkenberg. Hulkenberg yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was the Haas. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was. That was a that was a that was a great move, I thought, <laughs> and and it, it was testament, I think, to the fact that the cars are, are sort of following quite nicely through some of the faster corners, which they weren't really able to do in the previous era. So I, I quite like that. No, it is it is better on on the whole, but I I think that um, again, I, this is why qualifying position becomes so much more important now. Like the higher up you're there, yeah. Better. I mean, nobody can keep a Red Bull behind though. It doesn't matter where Max qualifies; he can he can be twentieth on the grid. It wouldn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I, I think that's probably not an unreasonable uh, assumption. <laughs> okay, final thing uh, from from me anyway. Um, Lance Stroll, what oh. the heck was he doing? Yeah, I don't, I mean, so I watch replays of it, right? Because it, I mean, you kind of want to give some benefit of doubt when you're first seeing this. He wasn't, he was, there was a lot of space between his car and Dan, Daniel Ricardo's. Like, he, it just was, it wasn't, and I know that, I mean, it, it looks different on, you know, on camera versus in, you know, in the actual race. And I'm sure you want to kind of give some benefit of doubt there, but that was bad man that was really really bad that was i i don't even know how to describe it because no one else had those issues right everybody was was breaking and slowing down because max had slowed everybody down like this wasn't a thing I, I just don't know i just don't know what he was thinking i really don't yeah i think the response in the car was really the thing that annoyed me the most about it the fact that he went into the back of somebody <laughs> was... else and then and then said that idiot braked. well what do you expect <laughs> people to do into a hairpin yeah. under a safety car i, I exactly really understand i just uh, um and, and what do you again, think though i mean no nah, it, was, it was it was silly man it was really silly and and daniel ricardo's response afterwards in the pen was perfect you know the fact that he his his i had calmed down but that's really peed me off was um was i mean enlightening uh he, lance is not winning himself any friends and this is on the back of another race and another weekend where he was comprehensively outperformed by Fernando, like massively. Fernando, would, like bar a bar a, a shoddy soft hire choice, um, was was in the hunt for a podium, and yeah. and Lance was running into the back of a, an RB under a safety car. I'm sorry, but that's that's just like. I mean, are we are we now at the point where we're done with this nepotism experiment? Like, are we, are we done with this? Like, are we actually going to call it then? Is it an experiment? I don't, I mean, it is, I mean, I know he, I know he's a paid driver, right? That's what he is. But, um, you know, I, what is this man? No other driver would get to, would get to race a car. I mean, that, I mean, and, and Aston are not doing themselves. I mean, I love, I just love listening to and, and reading Mike Crack's quotes. Cause you know, he wants to say something completely the opposite of what he's saying, but he has to support <laughs> Lance Stroll because he has no choice. It just, it just feels weird and awkward. I don't, I don't quite know what they're trying to accomplish here. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, know. I think for me, Lance, Lance is the big enigma for me, right? That he, he can be, Fast. You look at sort of points in 2021. You look at how he was, how he um, drives in the wet. Um, you know, Turkey 2020, um, really good example of that. He took pole there. He has got flashes of speed. My problem with with Lance though is that he has a level, and there is a level that he could get to, but he has no intention of trying to improve himself. He's like. This is my level. I'm having fun driving this car. I I can attain a particular level uh, that makes me sort of competitive. He's not he's not like awful awful. Like he can still get a lap time out of the car. And um, but but there's no. There feels to me that like there's no dedication to his craft. There there's no sort of I'm going to spend hours and hours and hours absolutely honing everything. Find the weaknesses. Iron them out. Well, take the next step in a way that you know drivers like lando like oscar and, and this paid driver this this coming from a from a rich family the nepotism thing doesn't sit right with me either because lando comes from a very very wealthy background but he has dedicated himself to his craft he has gone out of his way to make himself better and improve season on season lance just hasn't done that the, 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 the sort of performances that he puts in right now are what you would expect of a driver that was in his first couple of seasons in Formula One, not his 
seventh or eighth season in Formula One because I, I don't see any progression in his driving. That for me is the problem. That for me is why you have to like he's he's not committed to this in the way that a younger, hungrier driver would be. Well, that's just it, right? I mean, it's not that we haven't had rich kids, and as you rightly pointed out, Lando comes from a wealthy family. We've had other other examples too. I mean, that's not it. You're what is annoying is what you just said, which is he does not appear to be trying. Like this speaks like a hobby, right? Like dad's pretty rich. He's got me this this cool, exciting gadget and where I can get to race it around the world. Fantastic. That's all it is. And meanwhile, you have drivers that are not getting chances. And we can go through a, a litany of names of, of drivers that are well, well deserving. And also at the same time, it's like, I mean, Aston could be a lot more higher up the ranks too. Like they could... They could firmly be behind uh, behind Ferrari, um, you know, maybe even uh, ahead of them in some ways. I mean, given how Fernando has been doing, and nobody expects him to to perform like Fernando. Nobody's expecting that. But but look, every weekend there is one point up for grabs for the back markers, and that is Lance Stroll's position. Basically, that's what it is because. You have two Ferraris, two Red Bulls, two Mercedes, two McLarens, and then you have one Aston, and then the other one is is Lance Stroll, which is that weekend after weekend consistently, that's the one point that the that the bottom half of the grid is trying to vie for, and there's a reason it is that way, and and I don't know, even it, we we seem to be either not talking about Lance Stroll or coddling him in some way. I mean, that's what the team is doing, which I know they kind of have to do. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I guess my weird. my 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 overriding fear about this is Lance, is Lawrence Stroll and his stated aim that he wants to win a world title with his son. The problem is, is if if Lance goes, does Lawrence go as well? Because if he does, yeah. then that's that's Aston Martin done. Well, I, I heard so, some, so do, some... do we Do we just have to take those two things together? I, I've heard some things uh, to the effect of he might be trying to sell to the highest bidder, which wouldn't be surprising. I mean, really, really at the end of the day, I mean, you know, rich people generally have a very good exit plan, which is to make more money than they have invested. And so I, I can see that. And, and he certainly has made um, Aston a, a worthwhile investment for whoever chooses to sort of take over, right? I mean, the new facility, everything. I mean, all of the above, really. Um, signing Fernando up in the for, for the next couple of years, I think all of that speaks to, there could be a lining up of that. But uh, yeah, I'm with you. I mean, if, if Lawrence Stroll truly wants to win, I mean, he's smart enough to know that this is not going to get it done. We've talked often and often about you need the you need those two drivers to work together at least to an extent to get you a constructor's title, yeah. if if not for a driver's title. It doesn't look like there's anything you know in the works there. Yeah. You no. Know, by the way, I think I think um, Stroll probably just ended uh, Ricardo's career as well and <laughs> with that crash. I think I don't know. It's oh, too early. Yeah, it's a shame. Dan, Danny Rick was having a good uh, having a good weekend, mm-hmm. wasn't he? Right. I think that's uh, that's time to. To call it. Yeah. Thanks very much, Amar. Yeah, no, this was cool. Let's do it again. <laughs> <laughs> As Amar says, we will do it again. <laughs> um, please like, please subscribe, please comment. We read all of them. Uh, we even replied to some of them. Um, we'll see you guys in the next one. Later. <laughs>